Hey there, it is Sanctuary Systems video 202. We are diving a little deeper into learning how ProPresenter works. We're going to take a leisurely stroll through the steps we take to get the ProPresenter playlist ready for a typical Sunday morning. And along the way, we'll get a deeper understanding of some of the tools and how they work. Now, I should stop right here and just point out the fact that Renewed Vision, the company that makes ProPresenter, has many excellent tutorials on their website and, um, and on their YouTube channel. I'll put some links in the description if you want to really learn ProPresenter inside and out. As an overview, here are the steps. Create the playlist, add the songs, check the settings, set the call to worship, set the announcement videos, and add the sermon slides. Okay, step one. The first thing we need to do to get started is to copy last week's playlist. I found that that's easier than starting a new playlist from scratch. So over here on the upper left is the organizational area. It's organized into libraries, presentations, and playlists. Libraries store and organize the various presentations. Presentations are things like songs or sermons. Basically, any set of slides that are saved together as a unit. Playlists are sets of presentations saved in a specific order. So each Sunday service has its own playlist. They're organized by the year, in this case, 2022, and then labeled with the date. So here's last week's playlist. Right click and then choose duplicate. And rename the new playlist. I usually just do year, month, day. The playlist has a lot of the presentations already loaded in. All you have to do is change out the songs and update things for this week. If this is your responsibility, then you should have been given a Sunday morning rundown sheet, listing all the songs, their keys, uh, and some useful notes. There's actually a little sleeve for the sheet on the cover of the guides folder, and someone might just leave it right there. So let's start with the songs. To delete last week's songs, just select them and press delete. You can also delete last week's sermon. Just to be clear, deleting presentations from a playlist doesn't delete them from the library, so you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting something permanently. To add songs, the fastest way is to press Command F on the keyboard to bring up this quick search window. Then type in the name of the song you want, or even a lyric from it, and it will appear in the results window. Then you can just choose the presentation you want and drag it into the presentation window like this. Do that for all the songs. And then next, we need to make sure that the songs are set up properly. We're going to check a few things for each song. The size, the theme, the arrangement, and actions. And the keys or the pads. Most of this will probably already be correctly saved with the presentations, but it's still a good idea to check them all and, um, and to know how to fix things if they get set incorrectly for some reason. So the size and theme of the presentation is most likely already set, but if it's an old song that hasn't been used for a while, there's a chance it still needs to be updated. For example, here's an old song. As you can see, the slide shape doesn't match our projection, and the size and style of the text is wrong. To fix something like this, first select the whole song presentation by clicking it in the playlist window, then right click and go to resize and the preset for sanctuary wall. Then go up to the theme button and down to our LCC widescreen theme preset, and then to the one called worship wide. There, that looks better. As you can see from the little icons on the slides, there are some old media link actions we should remove as well. Just right click and choose remove action. Now you've probably noticed that some slides are labeled like verse and chorus. These groups are really important when we talk about um, arrangements in a bit. But while we're still updating this old song, I can show you how to set up the groups and labels. Just right click and go to group and choose the group you want it to be. The first slide should always be blank and set to the group called blank. And if there's a label on the slide that you don't want, like this old media name, just right click and go to label, none. Okay, now let's talk about arrangements. We need to check those. As you can see in the slide labels, the song presentations are made up of verses, choruses, bridges, etc. One really handy feature of ProPresenter is that you can save specific arrangements 
um, of those sections. If you click this button at the top right of the presentation, it will show the arrangement view. This top line shows all the master parts. Below it shows the way those parts are arranged and saved. Most of our songs have just one arrangement, usually called default or LCC default. You can change and save new arrangements, but I won't get into all that in this video. The main thing to remember is to check that it's set to the default arrangement, not master. All that detail said, there's actually a faster way to set the arrangement. Just right click the song in the playlist, uh, go to arrangement and then choose default or LCC default. Next, we need to check the song's actions and macros. Actions are things that are automatically triggered when a slide is activated. There are about a zillion things that actions can do. So the folks at Renewed Vision also created macros. We mentioned macros a little bit in the last video, but um, they're basically collections of actions. So we wanna make sure that the worship basic macro is set to the first slide with lyrics on it. That macro has a set of actions that ensures that things look and sound right, primarily for our live stream. Most songs already have this set. You can see a little M icon, but if not, you can just drag the macro from the macros tab in the show controls window. That's this whole area over here and drop it on the slide. As for each song, we need to double check or add a couple specific actions. On the first slide, the blank slide, right click and go to add action, clear and audio. That'll add a clear audio action to the slide so that if there's some background audio playing, clicking on this slide will fade that audio out. And what do I mean by background audio? Well, usually I'm talking about pads. A pad is a subtle ambient music loop that helps add a little more fullness to the sound of the band. Not all songs use them or need them, but when a slide is set with a pad audio action, it will automatically start playing the pad when the slide is clicked. So by setting up pads ahead of time, it's one less thing to worry about during the actual service. You can find the pad audio files over in the show controls window in the audio tab. There are a few folders organizing the different types of audio files we use. In the custom pads folder, you'll see pads for different keys and three options for each key. Mellow, light, and thick. Different versions depending on how prominent you want the pad to be in the mix. If you click an audio file in the audio tab, it will start playing, but you can add it as an action to a slide by dragging it onto the slide like this. If there's already an audio action on the slide, it will replace it. When the slide is clicked, it slowly fades in the sound of the pad. Of course, it's really important that the pad is in the right key. So that Sunday rundown sheet will tell you what the keys of the songs are and if a pad is needed or not. Also, it's worth noting that anytime a new audio file is played, anything that was already playing will be stopped. But it doesn't happen instantly. We've set it up to fade slowly so that there's no distracting jumps or cuts in the audio. So if it's not doing exactly what you expect, just be patient. It might be slowly fading. And if you ever want to remove an action from a slide, just right click on the slide and choose to remove it. In addition to the clear audio action we put on the blank slide earlier, you could always clear audio by clicking the button up here on the upper right, but it's nice to have it in a few places. Whew, okay. I know this may seem like a lot, but let me just say again, most of these things will already be set up properly. The most likely thing that you'll need to change is the key of the pad audio and uh, to make sure that the default arrangement is, is set. There are three more things remaining. Call to worship, the announcements, and the sermon slides. Click the media button on the upper right to bring up the media bin on the bottom of the screen. The media bin is where ProPresenter organizes videos and images that can be used in presentations. Now, scroll up to the top of the Sunday playlist or click on the welcome screens presentation. You'll see the second slide is labeled call to worship countdown. This is a video we made which displays a piece of scripture and has a 60 second countdown to the beginning of the service. In the media bin, there's a playlist called calls to worship, which holds all the versions of this video that we have. 
The only difference between them is the scripture. So you can choose which scripture you'd like to show this morning. It's good to vary it up week to week, but we do have some that are specifically labeled for use during the Christmas or Easter seasons. Drag the video you want onto the slide and it's set. Now the video itself doesn't actually have any audio associated with it, but we also want to play our call to worship music. Click on the audio tab in the show controls window and choose the call to worship folder. You'll see we have a version of the music for every main key. Look at the key of the first worship song, then drag the appropriate call to worship audio onto the slide. That way, the long decay at the end of the call to worship will transition smoothly into the first worship song. Next, the announcements. Our announcements consist of two videos. There's the loop of slides that play at the beginning and end of the service, and there's a hosted announcement video which plays um, after the closing worship song. If you're in charge of building the Sunday playlist, then someone will or should have made sure that you have access to the new announcement videos for this week. You can bring them in on a thumb drive or they may have already been loaded onto the computer. In either case, um, where you'll find them or where you should put them is in the folder called announcement videos. There's an alias for that folder on the desktop. So if you're bringing the videos in on a thumb drive, you can just drag and drop them into that folder. Our announcement videos folder is actually assigned as a smart playlist in the media bin, which means ProPresenter will show us whatever is in that folder on the computer. So the two videos that we just dropped in the folder will show up here in the announcement videos playlist, usually all the way at the bottom. Now we need to put them in the correct places. We're still viewing the welcome screens presentation and you'll see the first slide is actually labeled drop announcements. So let's do what it says. Drag and drop the loop announcements from the media bin and make sure that it's the right date. Now here's the important thing to note, dropping the announcements here will allow them to play on the live stream, but in order for us to see them in the window on the screen in the sanctuary, there's actually another step to do. Right click on the slide and choose edit slide. That'll bring up the editor view. Down on the lower left in the objects panel, there's an object called announcement layer. Click that and it'll bring up the objects properties in the panel to the right. Under where it says fill and media, click the choose button and navigate to the announcement video. If the file browser isn't already showing the announcements folder, it's usually in the recent folder pull down, so you can get to it there. Once you've got the right file, again, this is the slides loop with the right date, click open, and that will load the video into this window, which is specifically sized and positioned to work with the slide overlay. Okay, now to go back to the main view, which is called the show view, not my favorite name for it, but whatever, click the show button up at the top. That's it for the pre-service welcome slides. Now let's go to the very end of the service to the announcements and benediction and end presentation. The third slide is labeled drop announcements here. So let's do that again. This is still the slides loop announcements video. Dropping it here will allow it to play on the live stream at the end of the service. While in the sanctuary, all we see is this foreground video element, which is a reminder for parents to pick up their kids from Sunday school, very important. Now the hosted video announcement can get dropped into the first slide of this presentation where it says drop hosted announcements here. This slide is set up to show the video both on the live stream and in the sanctuary. It works using a slide overlay prop, which is actually a little different than how the welcome screens video was set up at the beginning. Um, but we still need to make a few adjustments. So right click the slide and go to inspector. This brings up a window with details about media on the slide. Go over to the properties tab, set the scale alignment to middle right, and set the playback behavior to stop. Last, but certainly not least, the sermon slides need to be input as well. Pastor Brian usually does this himself, so I won't go into all that detail here, um, but just know that there is a guide for that in the guides folder on the tech table as well, in case you need it. Also, just make sure that the first slide of the sermon has the sermon basic macro on it. That will ensure things look and sound right on the live stream. And that concludes the walkthrough for putting together the Sunday morning playlist. I know it seems like a lot to take in. It is a lot to take in. Um, 
But like all these things, it becomes second nature once you've done it a few times. Mostly, you just need to remember these steps. Create the playlist, add the songs, check the settings, set the call to worship and the announcement videos, and add the sermon slides. Just a reminder, that checklist is also in the guides folder. But it doesn't have all the detail that this video had. Okay, in the next video, we are going to look deeper under the hood in Pro Presenter, and we'll also talk about some troubleshooting tips. So see you next time.